morning everyone how you doing uh, welcome back to off-grid farming UK uh, I am just in the tractor uh, in the cow shed as you can see the calves having breakfast uh, just off to feed the the mamas and jock the bull uh, a bale of straw um, gonna go and roll it out in their field give them something to munch on and uh, a nice dry bed to lie down on um, not sure if I'm gonna do much filming in the tractor uh, I'm very very new to tractor driving try and get some footage uh, up in the field with the cows and the bale So this is one part of driving a tractor uh, that I really, really struggled with, uh, with when I first started, which is changing an implement. So uh, we've got a quick disconnect on the front of the loader on the tractor, uh, and we've got various, we've got bale spikes and buckets and forklift forks and uh, muck grabs and all sorts. And uh, it can be a little bit delicate uh, changing over and, and picking up new implements. And the first time I tried it, I, I gave it about 10 goes and I just couldn't get it and I was pushing the forks around, I was making a right mess. Um, and of course Dan was here trying to show me how to do it and I, I just ended up giving up and letting him do it. Uh, and then last week uh, Dan was off the farm and I needed to change the implement and typically I did it first time, perfectly smooth. Uh, with no one there to, to prove it to um, and I wasn't filming it either so <laughs> I'm gonna try and stick the camera on the dashboard and see how many attempts it takes me to pick up the bale spikes goes and we're done. Ah, oh, such a genius tractor driver I am. Right, let's go and get the cows a straw bale.
had to dodge the road planings and chippings there. Doing a bit of track repair, as always. Say hello to the neighbours sheepy sheeps, don't mind the dirty windows. So these sheep are doing a great job, uh, there's only about 30 of them from the neighbour and they're really uh, just nipping the grass down so that it will come up nice and fresh in the spring. Oh look, cows are ready, cows are waiting. first into the bale. Just trying not to hit them with the spikes. Come on, Goose. Come on. That's it. Right, shut the gates. Right, let's go find a spot to put this bale. So, as you can see, this is a little bit of a winter sacrifice area. Uh, it's the driest land on the farm, pretty rough, pretty scrubby, but it's dry. So what we've been doing is uh, putting silage bales in a feed wagon, uh, and then we've been spreading the straw out on the ground. So everywhere they're making big loads of mess, we're effectively using the straw to cover up all the mud uh, and hopefully it'll all break down into the soil um, and uh, yeah we shall have some lovely new growth here once the cows have calved and we can move them out in the spring. So let's go find a uh, nice muddy patch and stick a bale in it. Apologies for my terrible driving there. This land has been woodland uh, at some point in the past, so uh, it's pretty, pretty rough. Hopefully you can see enough of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna pick a spot over here. So that is the feed wagon. Dan made it himself out of an old trailer and old feed barriers. 
So that's where we put the silage bales so that they don't tramp all over them. Oh, come on, missus. Don't walk in front of me. Right, this looks like a good spot for some straw action. The mama cows are pretty well behaved. They do get quite bolshy, but uh, they give you space. They move out your way if you're trying to unwrap bales and stuff. They just make a lot of noise about it. So I'll get that bale dropped off. I'll back off slightly, and then you can watch me unwrap it. Right, hopefully you saw some of that. Oh, I'm gonna turn the camera off for driving back because my driving is terrible. There's Rosie, she's the old lady of the group. She is nearly 11 and still giving a good calf every year. There's 47, who I had a good scratch with. Right, back in the tractor. Let's see if I can get out of the cow's field uh, without them trying to escape again.
coming and they're going to try and get through the gate. Let's make this quick. Is, uh, especially the ones with a lot of Highland in them are very cheeky and bolshy and if they get a chance they'll be straight up. Right. Look at this lot. They're all like, where's our silage? We don't want none of that stinking straw. But hopefully in six to eight weeks we will have a new crop of calves off of this lot. Having a good scratch on the gates. Bless them. Right, best go. That is us parked up back at the cow shed. So uh, that went relatively smoothly. Uh, as I said, I've only driven the tractor or oh, maybe about a dozen times, um, but I've fed bales kind of four or five times now. Uh, so just getting used to the weight uh, and especially in that field with the tree stumps and stuff, uh, gets the pulse going a bit when you hit one of those and the whole tractor kind of tips over, uh, especially when you've got two bales on the front. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got no issue driving the tractor. I quite enjoy it. Um, I just try and limit it. Uh, I just try not use the tractor unless I actually have to. Uh, and moving bales is one of those things you definitely want a tractor for. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that and uh, try and get a bit more filming done today. Uh, apologies for the wind. It is pretty darn windy out here. And uh, I'm just going around picking up little bits of silage wrap. Um, with the gales we had yesterday, the, it has blown pieces of silage wrap absolutely everywhere. So I'm just uh, wandering around the field picking them up. Because one thing we particularly dislike is having random bits of plastic floating around the farm. There we go. Ah. So yeah, we'd. Uh, very much like to move away from silage but um, right now it works very well for the system we've got um, definitely wanting to move away from it in the future uh, potentially move to hay or even better winter grazing um, it'd be amazing if this year we could build up the pastures uh, enough so that come uh, next winter we can actually feed all of the cows uh, on the pastures. We've certainly got enough land, it's whether we can manage the grass well enough this year uh, that there's plenty of standing grass come winter. Um, and with the mob grazing and things that should really help, uh, you know, improve everything. So let's go and see the coos. I have to admit, I could just film the cows all day every day. They are awesome to film, awesome to work with. There's Rosie having a lie down, the old lady. She's a good bit older than the rest of the, uh, the cows, but a very good mum, very good at raising. 
So you can see how rough this bit of land is, you can see all the stones and the tree stumps and the single lone tree. Um, definitely looking at trying to plant this bit up this year, um, put it back to semi-forested land, make a really nice shelter belt and uh, again next winter hopefully the cows can come in here, there will be much more shelter, much more grass but uh, yeah you can see the condition they're in, they're all nice and well fed. But you try tell telling uh, 11 pregnant ladies that they can't eat as much as they want and see what reaction you get. Because uh, these ladies certainly let us know when they want more food. cows are some of the bolshiest but they're, they're not particularly friendly, they don't particularly enjoy a scratch, they tend to move away. Number 47, one of the uh, black ones, she loves a good scratch, she's very friendly, comes right up to you, as does Jock, the big bull. So... Hey Jock, oh and there's Rusty. Rusty the farm dog, he loves the cows. Him and Jock have a special relationship, I'm not sure if he'll do it now. Oh yeah, no. He likes to go up and uh, lick all the snot out of Jock's nose and give him a bit of dental work. And Jock just stands there and lets him do it. Don't you Jock? Hey boy. Very calm, very nice cow to work with. Let's have a good scratch, shall we? They do like breaking things when they scratch up. Oh, look at that fence post. Tell me. You tell me. Yeah. So this is Jock, our bull, and the father of all the calves. He's got a bit of a muddy head. He's been rubbing something. He loves a good scratch. He's a proper gentle giant. I am always cautious with him because he does probably weigh well over a ton and if he did decide he doesn't like me I'd have to run pretty quick but uh, he's a, a big gentle giant and he loves a good head scratch aren't you jock hey boy yeah and you can see all this curly hair he's got on him you can see it in a lot of the calves as well Hey, you got good genes, boy. Produced very pretty calves, haven't you? Hey. Oh. Yeah, if you stand still for any length of time near him, he just comes over and gets a good scratch. Don't you, boy? Huh? Oh. Yeah. What have you been doing getting all this mud on you? What have you been doing? You've been rolling around in the dirt, hey? Oh, you're a good boy. Oh, that's it. Let's get that shoulder blade. Look at their muscles twitch. Oh, that's the spot. Hey, that's the spot, isn't it? It's the one bit you can't get yourself. Huh? 